good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it might be that you're watching this video. Today you're going to be doing the flagella stain. Now the procedure that we're doing the flagella with for the flagella stain is not in your lab manual. I had told you guys that the uh, procedure that you're going to be doing, you're going to print and bring to class. So make sure you have this handout when you're watching the video or all, and also bring it to class. So we're doing this instead of the procedure in the manual. That doesn't mean that the questions and the information in the manual is not important. It is. You need to know why we're doing it, what the results mean, but the actual step-by-step -step procedure is going to be different because this yields better results and that's of course what we want to see because we're doing the stain because we actually want to see something. Now flagella, as you recall from your um, homework, are long extensions that come off the bacteria cell that aid in movement. They're going to be moving to or from a chemical substance or maybe toward light. Um, so it adds to the bacteria's pathogenicity when they're able to move. Now the bacteria that we're going to be looking at today is called Proteus vulgaris. And it has peritrichus flagella, where it has the flagella all over the cell. So remember, you're going to need to know the different types of flagella arrangements. Um, so this particular one is really interesting to look at because it has the flagella all over and can move in all different directions. Um, so for this particular lab, it's going to be different because the flagella are so fragile. So imagine these little tiny hair-like ex or long hair extensions coming off the bacteria. And if you break them off, then you're just going to have the bacteria and everything's going to, you're going to be frustrated. Not only are they fragile, they're so thin that the stain that we use has a mordant in it. And if you recall, we've seen mordant before. We saw mordant in the gram stain to allow the crystal violet to form that complex. But the mordant in this case is to make the bacteria flagella look bigger because they are little teeny tiny extensions from the cell. So the cells themselves are small and then just imagine even smaller, thinner extensions coming off of them. So for this reason, uh, we cannot heat fix it. We cannot blot it dry. We can't rinse it like we normally would. So we need to be very careful. This procedure can be time consuming. So when you go to do this and the other procedures that you're gonna do today, you may want to start with this one because it has time periods where it has to dry for quite a while. So um, let's go ahead and get started with the procedure. <clears throat> okay, so what you'll have, go ahead and get everything going. So what you're going to have is your bacteria is going to be in a slant tube. But remember with a slant, it has auger in it that hardens it so you could, you know, potentially tilt it. But you'll notice that there's liquid in here. What I have done for you before lab is the bacteria has been grown on the surface for about 24 to 48 hours. And prior to lab, about an hour or hour and a half prior to lab, I added water to the tube and I just ran it down the tube very gently. And so what happens is the bacteria run down into the liquid. And so in that hour that they're sitting there, the flagella get activated and they start moving all over the place. Instead of trying to pull them off of the auger, you're going to be getting them from the liquid. So they've grown, they're nice and healthy, and now the flagella are really activated. So they'll be in a tube with some liquid in it. And in that liquid is where you'll find the bacteria. Okay, so in our procedure, it says get a, the Proteus vulgaris, so you'll have the tube of it, and then a very clean slide. So make sure the slide is very clean. Uh, sometimes we clean them with acid to get them washed really well, but they'll be, very, they'll be washed really well. And then um, it says to draw a border with a wax pencil. And there's a picture on the bottom, so essentially you're just making a border on the inside of the slide. So you're drawing a square inside of a rectangle. Okay. Now the reason that we have this is so that, um, oh darn it, where's my loop? Oh, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> the reason that we're doing that is because we're going to be adding the, the drop of water and then we're going to be allowing it to run down. And we don't want it to go past off of the slide. And the wax pencil is going to kind of stop that. <clears throat> so then it says place a drop of distilled water. So always flame your loop, even though it really doesn't say to do that. So we're going to let that cool off a bit. 
Okay, and then we'll get a drop of water. So we'll do it with a loop because you don't want too much. See, that's still kind of hot. Uh, we wouldn't do that with bacteria, right? Okay, so we have a drop of water in our loop, and we're going to place that on the slide. You want enough water that when you put the bacteria on there, that it spreads them out and it's able to run down, but not such a big drop of water that it's never going to dry. Okay? And then it says gently touch a colony. Now, because we're using this liquid method, you don't actually touch the auger, you touch down into the liquid. So we're ready to take our bacteria. So using our sterile technique, and then we go down ever so gently, and you're going to touch the liquid and then pull it out. You don't want to agitate them. You don't want to mix them. You want to be very, very gentle because these flagella can break. And then you're literally going to touch the loop to the water, not spread them, just touch it. As you touch it, the bacteria are actually going to swim into the water and then you're going to flame your loop. Okay? Now number six says to tilt the slide to where the drop of water runs to the other side. Don't mix it. So we're going to gently go like this and the water's running down. So instead of spreading it with a loop like we've done with some other stains, we're just letting it run down. So as it runs down, it's spreading the bacteria out, bacteria out into one level, but not breaking the flagella by mixing. Now you would allow this to dry at room temperature. There's no particular time limit. It's not for 10 minutes, five minutes. You just allow it to dry. Since we're not heat fixing, we don't need this anymore. Okay. So for time's sake, I'm not going to wait for this to dry because obviously it would probably take a half an hour. So it has dried. We'll just pretend that. Now we're going to use these little ampules for the flagella stain. They are uh, well, they're small and they can be expensive, so I'm not going to break this one, but I just want to show you what's inside. So it's a glass ampule inside. And so what would happen is that you don't take the lid off like I did. I just wanted to show you. What you'll do is you'll squeeze the ampule away from you, and when you squeeze it, the glass inside will break. So you don't take the lid off, you leave it on there. So you squeeze it and break it, and then you're going to squeeze it and let the stain drop and flood your smear. Now you don't have to flood the whole slide, just flood where the smear was, okay? You don't want to waste it. And what will end up happening is probably a couple of people will be able to use one and then we'll break another one and then another. I'm not going to hand these out to you. You'll come up and get them from me so that we're not using too many of them, okay? And then it says to allow it to remain on the slide for four minutes. So you wait for four minutes. And then the way that you rinse it, you know how we're used to holding up the slide and rinsing? Well, if we do that, we're going to end up breaking the flagella. They're too, too fragile. So what you're going to do is you're going to just run water on the slide. and allow it to just run. Now this would be purple when you're doing it, but because I didn't actually put any stain on, you don't see it. So see how I'm spraying it on there and then the water's just gonna drip off the edge. Okay, so you're gonna do that and what'll happen is you'll see the stain come up in the water and you'll just keep doing that until the majority of the excess stain just runs off of the slide. It goes with the water. Okay. Then when you're done, you can gently dump the excess off. Now you're going to just take that and put it off to the side and you're going to allow it to air dry completely. You're not going to blot it with a paper towel, you're just going to air dry. So that may take a while, so you're going to air dry that, start your next staining procedure or whatever other um, procedure you need to start for your lab today while that's drying. So like I said, don't wait till the last minute to do the flagella stain because you have, it could take, you know, 20, 30 minutes for it to dry completely because you can't blot it with a paper towel. So it's sitting off to the side waiting.